Running machine learning models is a parallel task that certain types of processes are really good at. CPUs are not great at running things in parallel, so running models on CPUs is very slow. But GPUs are great at parallel processing, so that's why they're commonly used for this. And dedicated GPUs like the RTX 4090 and its brothers and sisters are traditionally really fast, but they're also really expensive and use a lot of power. And that's why Apple Silicon Architecture emerged as the next best thing for consumers to run at home that can be used to run local LLMs for a lot cheaper. Yeah, and I can't believe I'm saying this about Apple. It's actually a lot cheaper to run fully blown out MacBook Pro than a couple of RTX 4090s. That's the initial cost and the ongoing operating costs. I'm getting to the cluster, okay? Just, just give me a moment. I just want to mention that besides the GPU, if you want to run larger models, you're going to need more memory or RAM. In Apple Silicon terms, that's unified memory, which means that the CPU and GPU can use the same memory. You might already know this. So you can have a Mac mini like this with 64 gigabytes of RAM and even the most expensive consumer Nvidia card only has 24 and that's 2000 bucks right there now how do you use this stuff for machine learning well to actually write machine learning code you're gonna want to use a framework or a library for example you might have heard of the old tensorflow then there's PyTorch and those will run on Apple Silicon machines and Nvidia and other hardware as well but not too long ago a new framework emerged that's optimized for Apple Silicon and that's called MLX it was released I think in 2023 by Apple as a machine learning team and it's supposed to squeeze more juice out of Apple Silicon on chips for machine learning and in benchmarks is showing that it performs better than PyTorch. So essentially it's Apple's answer to Nvidia's CUDA and this allows something like this tiny Mac mini to run MLX and have pretty good performance. Now since machine learning takes advantage of parallelism and it's parallel in nature, running several Macs in parallel should theoretically even better distribute the load, right? Well theoretically it should. So that's why I set up the cluster to try this out and answer some questions. For example, is it faster to run models if machines are clustered? And I also wanted to reassure myself that extending a machine with another machine will give me more capability to run larger models. These are the basic questions that are addressed by setting up a distributed system like this or a cluster. You can set up MLX with a distributed communication, but uh, as you can see, it's a bit of a setup and there's definitely some tuning and tweaking involved. So that's why I've already made a couple of videos about this thing. It's called EXO and it's really easy to set up and get going. I already made a video setting this up and I'll link to that down below, but this thing evolving very quickly. So the steps in that video are already a little bit outdated, but it gives you the idea of where to go and what to do. Anyway, EXO wraps up that uh, difficulty of distributed computing in a nice simple package for you. By the way, this video is not sponsored by them uh, or MLX or Apple or EXO. I just really like this. However, I do want to thank the members of the channel. Your support means a lot and it goes towards me purchasing these kinds of things and doing these kinds of setups, so thank you. So first of all, these are not all the same machine. These are the specs of the machines. There's two M4 Pro machines in there and three M4 machines with slightly different configurations. There are, however, two base models, the, the $600 machine in here. And I wanted to see if running just two base models is going to be any better than running one M4 machine with twice the RAM, 32 gigs, so 16 plus 16 versus one with 32, and also 16 plus 16 versus the base model M4 Pro. Now what's incredible here is that all these are running right now, and I have all the screens up here, and as you can see, there's stuff running on these machines. They're not just sitting idly. Well, they're not doing much, but they have a few things running on them, like the browser, terminal, uh, activity monitor, things like that. And we are using 28 watts of power for all these machines. Very low power use usage, there's multiple ways of hooking these up. These are actually connected via Thunderbolt Bridge. And through some experimentation, I've discovered that, yes, you can run everything through Wi-Fi or through LAN, but it's faster when you're doing it through Thunderbolt Bridge. I mean, on the surface, that kind of makes sense, but you actually have to test it out because what's theoretically supposed to happen is each machine is going to download a chunk of the model to work on based on its capabilities. This is determined automatically by EXO. But in reality, there is communication communication during the model run, which can be influenced by the network connection. So to set that up, I go to network 
and then Thunderbolt Bridge, make sure I configured my IP addresses manually on all the machines. I have uh, 192.168.10.10, 50 and then also under Thunderbolt Bridge under hardware, I've set up jumbo packets. Now I haven't tested this out yet, but theoretically, if you have jumbo packets, the packets are larger, sending more information across, therefore decreasing the processing power required to process each packet. Makes sense, gotta test it out different video maybe. Let me know if you're interested in that. Now, a couple of you uh, have noticed that I have five Mac minis, but each Mac mini has only three Thunderbolt ports. So if this is my home one down here at the bottom, then I can only run it to three other Mac minis. So that's why I added a Thunderbolt hub. Now I do have a Thunderbolt 5 hub here, but uh, I've tested this one versus the little one that I had before, which is a Thunderbolt 4 one. And I so far didn't notice any difference between them as far as the networking side of things. Now I want to dig deeper into Thunderbolt connectivity in a different video, but that's not for this one. Even though I'm using all Thunderbolt 5 cables here and two of these machines are capable of Thunderbolt 5, let's just assume it's a Thunderbolt 4 system, which has an improvement over regular of Wi-Fi and LAN anyway. We're gonna start out with some smaller models as proof of concept, and I'm going to run EXO here. So this is Llama 3.2, 1 billion parameter one, and it's small and it's fast. Let's say hello to it. And we get 90 tokens per second, right, uh, story. So yeah, if it's sustained, it's about 73 tokens per second. That's pretty fast, it's pretty good. So about 70 tokens sustained. And this is running on the M4 Mac Mini base model. No problem fitting that in there because it's a tiny, tiny model. Now for comparison, running this on the M4 Pro chip is giving me uh, close to 100 tokens per second, 96, 95, 94, so quite a bit better. Just to give you a baseline of the differences between the two machines, because those two chips have different memory bandwidths and memory bandwidth, not the size here, because the size doesn't matter. We've taken that out of the equation because it's a 1 billion parameter model, which is small. Here, the memory bandwidth is what's showing through. Memory bandwidth plays a huge role in how quickly these things generate tokens. And I made a whole video on bandwidth, you can check it out. I'll link to it down below. All right, so going back to our example with running it on one base model and getting 70 tokens per second, I'm now going to start up EXO on two base models. So now you'll see that I have two nodes running here, Mac mini 16 gigs and another Mac mini with 16 gigs. Together, not too much power, but let's see if we get a speed improvement. So I'm gonna run the same Llama 3.2, 1 billion, and we're getting 45 tokens per second, considerably worse this time around. And this is happening because the connections on the back, both the base models are going through the Thunderbolt hub. I found out that this plays a role and it's a negative consequence, unfortunately. So now I've connected the two machines directly to each other with Thunderbolt. All right, ready, watch this. 87, right, uh, story. 82, 83, 87, 99, 100 tokens per second. It was 73 sustained when it was running on one machine. Now we're getting 95, same model, same prompt, when it's two machines connected together via Thunderbolt, not Wi-Fi. So let's see if we can get the same kind of result by using one of the other machines. We're looking to beat 95 tokens per second here. I'm gonna head over to Mac Mini 4, cause that's the one that's also an M4 chip, but it has 32 gigs of RAM. And let's run that. All right, all right. So we're getting 89 here. Let's do a sustained. I have a feeling it's gonna be, yeah. There it is. So it's 73, 74 tokens per second. Clearly the amount of RAM didn't have any effect on this. We're still dealing with the M4 chip. So this kind of proves that we're limited by the M4 chip and not the RAM in this case. So we can kind of conclude that getting one base model M4 Pro machine will give you similar performance as far as this model and tokens per second that two M4 base models will give you. And finally, machine three, right? Uh, story. So we're getting about 104 tokens per second here, about 100, dipping around 97, 96. Oh, come on, make up your mind. We're down to 93. 
One other thing to keep in mind is EXO is not without overhead. If you run MLX directly against Llama 3.21 billion, for example, with 4-bit uh, quantization, there it is. It's, it's going pretty fast. <laughs> and we're talking about 281 tokens per second here. Let's do it again to make sure. It's, that seems a little high. 280 tokens per second, that's pretty good. Remember with EXO, we were getting about 100. So if you're running only on one machine, that's something to keep in mind as well. Now let's take it up to the max. Really push the system hard and see what kind of power usage is gonna have when all five machines are just going full bore. For that, I'm gonna run a loop generating on all five machines at the same time. Each of the M4 Pro machines takes up about 87 watts and each of the M4 machines is taking up about 50 for a total of almost 200 watts, just over 200 now. So this is sustained power usage when everything is being utilized to the max. We're still using less power than this. And this is interesting right here. The machine on the bottom. <laughs> oh. This might not be the best rack setup, folks. We're at almost 40 degrees on the bottom machine. The other ones seem like they're quite a bit cooler. This is the other, this one right here, machine number three is the other M4 Pro machine. And this one, this one, and the top one are all M4 machines. So the M4s are a lot cooler than the M4 Pros, but the one on the bottom, I don't know if it's because that's the central hub and it's got more work to do with Thunderbolt or because all the air is sort of blowing down. Although, I don't know, it's getting dispersed, so I'm not sure why. I'm gonna have to blame the Thunderbolt connectivity on this. Let me know in the comments if you think otherwise. Let's push this a little bit further to see how big a model we can run. So here is is the base model Mac Mini, and I wanna switch this to, let's say, Quen 2.5, coder seven billion parameters. Code something, boom. And there it is. It's actually running the seven billion parameter Quen model, which is supposed to be very good at coding, and it's giving me 21 tokens per second, which is pretty good. Write primes in JS. There it is, it's generating primes up to a certain limit in JavaScript, 20 tokens per second, pretty good. Now let's try the Quen 2.5 Coder 32 billion parameter model, which should definitely break. Try again. And it started downloading the model, and that makes perfect sense because the model is not locally available on this machine. Now the way it's set up by default is that each machine will get a copy of the model. But if you start up a whole cluster without running anything first, like uh, five nodes or four nodes or whatever it might be, and then you run a model that might not fit, it's supposed to only download parts of that model to each machine. But that's not the case here. I'm only running it on one right now. So it's gonna be 17 gigabyte file it's gonna take a little bit. Well, after a bunch of downloading, it finally did it. It's, it's doing a 32 billion parameter model, code something, and it's using the two base model Mac minis, but it's doing it kind of slow. We're going about eight tokens per second here. So not super practical to running such a large model on two base Mac minis. And just for comparison, it is a little bit better when running on just one M4 Pro Mac mini. We're getting about 12 tokens per second here. Time to try a big one. Let's go to uh, Nemotron 70B. Hello. Hello. It's nice to meet you. Is there something I can help you with? So it's going kind of slow, 4.2 tokens per second. And that's running on the two most powerful ones I have, the M4 Pro down here and the M4 Pro over here. That's a total of um, 88 gigabytes of RAM. My math is not that great, but you know, 64 plus 24. We don't need that much RAM for this because it's a four bit quantization, but even at four bits, it should be really fast. It's 4.9 tokens per second, pretty unusable. Okay, it's the moment of truth. This is when I get to run a model on all five machines. So I'm gonna start this up on all five machines. Let's go with something nice and easy. Llama 3.2, 1 billion. Hello. It worked. The whole thing works. Nice to meet you. 67 tokens per second. What's your name? Okay, 69, 72, 74 tokens per second. All right, this is actually working and it's working pretty well. We got a cluster of five nodes and it's going 74 tokens per second. Hi. 
up to 74, I should say. Sometimes it ranges, but you know, that's not too bad. But it's a small model, 1 billion parameters, and 74 is pretty much what we had to start with on one machine, which we can easily do. I guess I should try a bigger model. So because the Mac Mini has only three Thunderbolt connections, I have to use that hub. And because I use the hub, there is a little bit of network contention going on there. These hubs are mostly used for displays, if you wanna have multiple displays off of one Thunderbolt port, but they're not really meant for connecting multiple computers to each other for networking purposes. So that's why the best possible scenario that I can show you here is having four machines, not five. So I wanted to demonstrate that while all these machines are connected directly to each other through Thunderbolt. And we're gonna go with Quen 2.5 coder 32 billion. Hello. Hello, how can I assist you today? Good, 16.4 tokens. Write some JS code to find uh, primes. There we go. And there it is, it's going and it's giving me about 16 and a half tokens per second on average. It's writing the function. It's not terribly slow, but it is pretty slow. And while that's happening, you can see that all these machines, the four machines, I should say, not five, they're all using some of the GPU up to probably 80% of it. And we're consuming just about 50 watts of power for all this. So overall, not terrible. If you're gonna use this on a smaller model, that would be ideal. The power savings are pretty tremendous here. So why bother? What's the point? Can anyone explain why cluster a bunch of Macs is better than just having a PC with a GPU cluster? Well, in some ways it is, and in some ways it's not. For example, the Mac Mini M4 has a unified memory, which means on-chip memory can be used for the GPU, given it up to 64 gigabytes of GPU RAM. I already said this earlier in the video. The biggest consumer GPU has only 24 gigabytes of RAM, unless you go for the A100 or the H100, which are very expensive. So theoretically, you can run bigger models on the minis. Seeing that that's the case, why doesn't Musk just buy 100,000 Macs? Well, Musk has a lot of money. I don't have, and you probably don't have that kind of money that Musk has. So Musk can afford buying $100,000, $30,000 boards and probably paying hundreds of thousands of dollars, if not millions of dollars to run them the electricity costs. So for those of you that are about to write that in the comments, this is useless, this is pointless, why not just run a bunch of these? Well, this is why. So depending on your use case, the machines that you're using and the model that you're running, you will get wildly different results. For now, this is a great concept and I love this idea, but so far I haven't found that it's better to run a cluster than to just get a MacBook Pro with 128 gigs of RAM and the M4 Max with 128 gigs of RAM, which I also be making videos about and testing, so make sure you don't miss that. That has been shown to have insane performance for these types of applications. Of course, if you can afford it and get two of these, then you'll still be cheaper than getting an equivalent setup in NVIDIA cards. I can't swing that, so I'm just gonna stick with one for now and uh, hope for the best. Yeah, I'm gonna sell my M2 Max. Anyway, thanks for watching. It's been fun showing you this tower. Fun experiment, but uh, I don't think I'm going to actually use something like that in the long run, at least not yet. This is still very early days for this kind of technology. This setup will probably have some uses, especially if you combine four 64 gigabyte machines, which I happen not to have, but uh, Alex Chima on uh, Twitter, he showed off his setup. So if you wanna follow Project Exo along, I'll link to it down below as well. You can check it out. Anyway, I hope you have a good one and I will see you in the next one.